Hi everyone, .NET 9 Preview 7 is out and there's a lot of features, a lot of new features, great new features, but I want to focus on static web asset delivery on this video. I'm going to show you how you can improve the performance just changing some lines of code in your application. I am about to add it 12 times Microsoft MVP and if you're new here, please consider like and subscribe to this channel to support. And so let's check the static web asset delivery. What a long name. Okay, moving to our desktop. I'm here with my terminal. And just to show you the .NET version I'm using, I'm using the .NET 9 Preview 7, which was released a few days ago. And all I did was execute .NET New Blazor O and put a name for my application, case Blazor New Static Files. I just did it. It create a project for me and I will open this project with my favorite ID which is Rider and as you can see this is the same instructor before we don't have any changing on files file naming or such anything but some things changed on this new default template so if you create an app using Blazor, MVC, Razor pages you're gonna see the same changes I will cover on this video. Well, first things first, uh, let's understand what is static files. Okay, what are static files? What are they for? What does this mean? Every time we create a web application using ASP.NET, by the way, ASP.NET is the umbrella. We have Blazor, Razor, and a lot of things under ASP.NET. And by the way, Razor is the view engine we use to interpolate HTML and CSS to get the final result. So this will, the same behavior you will see here, covers Blazor, Razor Pages, MVC, Blazor was and any other uh, web application you create with ASP.NET. Okay, just to clarify, this is our root folder, okay? And here we can see the static files, images, CSS, even there's no JS here, thanks God, but we can find JS here too. We have the bootstrap, the CSS for bootstrap. And basically when our application runs, if you configure your application and say app.use static files, everything static inside this www root folder will be served. What does this mean is that, for example, if you're running on your localhost 5000, for example, you can access all those files, for example, CSS slash bootstrap and so on. We can access these files here because they are being served. So we are serving static files. As we serve static files on our web applications, they count as a request as everything for our applications. For example, when you reference a CSS on your file, it will be a request for this CSS and so on. So what the browser does, they do a process of cache these files, which basically is download these files into their the customer machine into the browser and next time you need this file is on the local machine and doesn't need to go to your server okay this is a very common way to decrease the amount of requests to your, your application and if you will inspect here the bootstrap.min.css is another way that we have to reduce the amount of data through our network because this is a minified file if you open this file there's no empty space, there's no break lines, different from this file, which is not minified. Here we can see a break line, here we can see some space, okay? This file is different. We have a, everything together. And by the way, the browser doesn't need all these identifications to understand the file. This is just for our human, okay? And for this file, for example, this is very easy to maintain because it's very easy to read. It's very easy to change something different from this bootstrap.me file, okay? But anyway, this is naturally a kind of compression. We are compressing our file by removing empty spaces and removing the break lines here. But we already have a kind of compression built in in the browsers. Basically what we can do, we can on our server zip our files and send this zip it to our desktop and unzip it here. Seems to be a good idea. 
now. For example, if we have this bootstrap file with it's around 159 KB, it can be minified to, I don't know, 50, 60 kilobytes and then be transferred over the network with more lightweight for this, okay? But in this, this new version of ASP.NET, this is one of the features, right? What we have with the static files is just serving the static files. They simply doesn't do any kind of compression. And by the way, I told you that this file will be cached, okay, on the browser. But how do I know when I have to look for another version of this file? For example, uh, every time that we set a cache to a file, we set a header and say the max age for this file is, for example, eight hours. Okay, but what happened in the meantime? I changed this CSS here. Wow, I need my customer to force his cache to be reset. We need to download a new version of this CSS file. So it's a little bit difficult, it's a little bit weird to do. We have so many techniques today, by the way, ASP.NET implements one of these techniques, which will append some version to your file at the end of your file, for example, app.css v1 for some something like this but it's not very efficient okay and we have another standard for this kind of uh, of change with this e tags okay what e tags does is basically they pick up the size of the file and even the content of the file and generate a hash from it okay then this hash has been included in the file name for example, if we create the hash an e tag for our app.css, it could be something like app.css. Okay? Consider this to be a hash. Okay? This is a good idea because every time file size will change, if the name changes, okay, we will have another file. But if the size changes or if the content changes, a new hash will be generated. And as the hash makes part of the file name it will force uh, the cache to be reloaded so there's a good opportunity here but how can we implement all those uh, those things the compression and uh, the e tag for example by the way we already have uh, a compression on ace.net but it is a response compression okay this response compression it can compress the HTML result of your page before sent to the customer. It is not related to the static files as I'm showing here, okay? Well, the good news is that in version 9, this is already implemented for us. If you come here to our program.cs, okay, we're gonna see a new line here, which is app.mapstaticassets. This line is not very different from the previous one, which was app.useStaticFiles. So every time that you want to serve static files on your app, you need to include this line here. Even though your application have the files here, it won't be served if you do not include this line here. So use static files should be present on your application if you on your program.cs if you want to serve any static files here. Okay, but now we have the app.map static assets. This is a different kind of method which implements all those things I comment, including e tags and caching. Uh, by the way, the app.use static files is not deprecated. Okay, you can use this uh, to serve static file. You're not obligated to use the map static assets here. Okay, it's up to you to use one or other. I will add just the map static assets here. Okay. So with this, we are already serving our files here, okay? And if you will run our application, we will see, uh, at least when running with uh, dash C release, okay, which is the final version, I will show you in a few minutes, it will generate more files than this mean files, more files than this app.css. That's because it will generate also the compressed files. But we have a problem here because, uh, for example, when I work in on development mode, as I am now, I don't want the compressed files. I don't want to cache those files. I just want the pure files to work. I just want that those are files for production. But how can we manage this in our code? For example, we have some environment variables here, like environment that is development, but you know, it's a pain 
to try to use this variable every time so if environment dot is development do this or do that so ASP.NET implemented a very modern and clean way to do this this is done here in app.razor in this scenario uh, this will change if you're going to MVC to Razor page or any other framework right but here in app.razor we can see that the links here use the href to assets okay this is the change we have here because the assets are pointing just to the base files min.css for bootstrap app.css and even this styles.css which never exists on development on, on development it exists but it doesn't exist when our application is not running this is generated on the fly okay these files but anyway we can compress it we can generate the tags for it and we can map this asset here so we have this resource also for it okay and here we have the import maps which will generate the other headers necessary to do the compressions on the server and to send the compressions to create the compressions on the client and send the compressions to the server right so this is all done by default this is the new template as we can see the folder structure did not change uh, the files name did not change we just have two changes which is here in program use app.map static assets in here and on our app.razor uh, we're just changing the assets here and using the import map here so from now if you're creating a new project using blazor a razor Razor pages, MVC, you will see this the same behavior here. Okay, let's run our application. Let me bring my terminal here. Okay, if you run our application with .NET run, for example, I'll bring my browser here. Okay, if we inspect here on our page source, we're gonna check that those reference that we add for bootstrap.me and app and Blazor new state new static files with my application names, so they got some hash here okay as i told you uh, so okay they are working if we open the files here they won't minify the files which i think is a missed opportunity here because you know who doesn't want to minify their files it could be done by by default okay but let's see how the this application behavior on our file system for example i will do here on dotnet build and dash c release to compile this application in release mode and we have here the the bin release.net9 new okay this is our publish folder this is our www root folder and these are are our files okay let's check this so as we can see there's the bootstrap folder but here we have the app.css app.css.br which is a kind of compression and app.css.gz which is another kind of compression so from 3 kb to 2 kb here not a very impressive number but let's take a look here in the bootstrap.me and here we can see that it uh, down from 159 to 18 that's really really impressive so we have the broadly compression here we have the gz compression here all those files are here and available generates many kinds of file because not all browsers supports the br compression not all our browsers support the gz compression so let it here and that import map will do the job to check if the browser prefers to use broadly prefer to use gz compression and go on okay and that's it for this video i hope you enjoyed the time and learn something about static assets uh, static files compressions and a lot of other things and now it's your time to drop a comment below to we open a discussion about compressions and the brand new features from ASP.NET and .NET 9. Thank you very much and see you next time.